Good evening. Any questions? Dulal, let's hear from Dulal Chandra. Yes. Um, a few nights ago, you spoke about the, the stage of um, Asaki and that the development of an I comes from an, an association. Attachment. An, an attachment. And that attachment generally begins with an appreciation of specific qualities of Lord Krishna. So my question is, if, if one has not involved themselves enough in the Leela to develop specific attachment to qualities of the Supreme, uh, then one should just continue to develop attachment to the qualities of the sadhus and specifically the guru. Would that be a proper assessment of how one should try to advance to the stage of Raghunuga Bhakti? Well, there's a slight error in your remembrance of uh, my explanation in that um, while specific qualities of Krishna will stand out for different devotees and different bhavas, it's um, attachment to the object of love, the Vishaya Lambana, that uh, constitutes um, Asakti. Granted, the Vishaya Lambana or the um, in, in, in Rasa there's the two props, if you will, the two uh, and from a dramatic perspective, you need the you need the object of love and the personification of the love for that object. So Krishna is the object of love, and the devotee is the personification of that love. And there are different types of love, so there are different types of devotees: friends of Krishna, parents of Krishna, lovers of Krishna, and so forth. So the Vishaya Lambana. with particular qualities and those qualities from one perspective can be part of the Vishaya Lamana from another perspective their Udipanas or stimulants a different type of Vibhav um, and um, so at any rate, in, in Asakti, yes, a particular focus of Krishna is coming into view based on um, a, a taste arising in Ruchi for Bhakti that is specific because it has a corresponding object that becomes uh, clarified through Ruchi Bhakti as it turns into Asakti. <clears throat> um, so, it's not, what I'm going to say, it's not just particular qualities of Krishna, per se, that um, one becomes attracted to, that forms the eye of uh, a devotional persona, a bhakti, a rasa persona. That's part of it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, now, from Rupa Goswami's perspective, it would appear that if you were to go through the 64 qualities of Krishna mentioned by Rupa Goswami, and you had uh, Ruchi, a taste for bhakti, certain qualities would stand out in as much as the Ruchi was specific and would correspond and start to build, if you will, concretize the object of love that one becomes attached to, and that attachment brings out the eye, just like attachment, materially speaking, brings a sense of identity. So attachment spiritually to Krishna in a particular form with particular qualities and so on and so forth um, gives rise to the person, the spiritual persona, the bhakti rasa persona. So, I'm, I'm, I mean, you're, you're right, but I just want to say it's, it's not just the qualities 
themselves. That's but that's an aspect of it, and it's a good way of talking about it. Particular qualities will will stand out. <clears throat> um, and let me uh, say further also that, as I've said on a number of occasions, we will consider all of the devotees in our sangha to be on the path of raga bhakti. But we need to qualify that in that their level of eligibility for rag bhakti varies. And as a result, their ability to um, to adopt all of the practices that constitute raga bhakti will be limited by their eligibility, which primarily is taste. Hmm? Um, so... Lacking the taste, Jiva Goswami uses the term, as I've many times mentioned, ajata ruchi. Ajata means like root, not born, ruchi, in whom taste is not yet born. Still they're doing rag bhakti, ajata ruchi, raganuga bhakti. When raganuga bhakti is driven by taste, that's the defining characteristic of it. How can you have rag bhakti without it? <laughs> is a curious question. But he says, that uh, by association with Rag Bhakti, one may become attached to the ideal um, uh, or attracted to the ideal that he or she, that Rag Bhakti represents, the tradition represents. Well, De uh, in, his, in, his, in his Vedanta Sutra says one may be driven by knowledge of Raganuga Bhakti. Hmm? So there's knowledge of the theory and what the ideal is that will. Uh, arguably can come into place before the taste. Hmm? And so, therefore, your goal, theoretically, based on your knowledge, is to attain Krishna in Braj, which is the general idea of Rag Bhakti, hmm? and not, by contrast, to attain uh, Ram Bhakti or uh, Bhakti for Narayan and Bhaikuntha and so forth. So, how can you be a Vaidhi Bhakti, when your ideal is that of Rag Bhakti, even though your taste for it is is maybe limited, and your knowledge um, is nonetheless in place or being put in place, refined, uh, kind of in a sense we are we are on the Rag path, and we're we're kind of coming to know that as as we advance, we can understand more where we're going, what it's about. We, we get more knowledge and so forth. And this will help us in our practice in terms of having a, um, the goal of bhakti, madhurya bhakti, and bhakti in intimacy rather than bhakti with aishvarya. Hmm? So we're speaking about it in broader terms and Jiva Goswami uses the term ajata ruchi. So um, in that sense, we are a rag bhakti sampradaya. Hmm? And within Rag Bhakti, the opportunities for Madhurya Rasa, a particular kind of Madhurya Rasa, and 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 for Sakya Rasa due to the influence and the Gore and Nityananda is made available to us. Hmm. Um, so you apply yourself according to your taste and understanding hmm, of the path. And there are different kinds of devotees too. There are the, those who are driven by ruchi, is in a more general sense, and those who are driven by um, more by their intelligence. Um, obviously, Jiva Goswami is very much driven by his intelligence. He's a philosopher. Hmm? He's much more than Rupa Goswami. Hmm? Um, uh, the the former driven by taste may be preferential, but but it's not necessarily like that they're separate entirely. Hmm? So one may have uh, people are different. So someone maybe may need, may require, or may be inspired by the logic of the path to arrest uh, with one's intelligence the nature of the path, and and so on. That's not opposed to rag bhakti. Let's say, for example, you have a desire to drink milk. Okay. Now you're qualified to drink milk, except you got to know where it is, how to get it, how to squeeze the udder, when, how to get her to let down, what she needs to eat. you got to take care you need all that as well. So 
So there's knowledge about Raghunuri Bhakti. So even if one develops a taste and affinity for it, then it should show up in the beginning as the desire to know about it, to find out about it from the scripture, how it's a path unto itself, distinguished from others, even within bhakti, and so forth. Or, without taste, one may come to knowledge about it and gather on that side, and then you know, taste may come, uh, will come, and be more uh, specific and so forth. So, um, so your question is that if, if I'm not on the stage of asakti, and I'm not having attachment for a particular uh, picture, if you will, perspective, subjective perspective of of Krishna, endowed with endowed with unlimited qualities, some of which really stand out because my attachment is to Krishna as as a friend, or Krishna as a, as a, as a, as a lover, and so forth. Um, if I'm not at that level, and um, my taste, if you will, is more for, let's say, understanding the theory, the scriptures, and so forth, and it, 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 how will I apply myself at that stage in terms of developing a, a persona, an I, as you put it, a bhakti rasa I, I am the friend of Krishna, I am the handmaid of Radha, and so forth. And yeah, I mean it's 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 uh, true. You um, you will, as far as qualities go, right? You identify with the various qualities of saintliness, and uh, that's uh, that's uh, a, a general idea. Ruchi means attachment to bhakti. So yes, it's characterized by no attachment for worldliness, but another form of it, if you will. Kind of, you can make, might say, a preliminary form of attachment to bhakti is attachment to understanding. Uh, that I might, thus, so that, of course, it has to be combined with this. That I might apply myself, understanding bhakti, so that I might apply myself. Better just understanding it. That is not good enough. But you have to study, learn, with a view to better applying yourself. And of course, if you do study, then you are better suited to apply yourself. But still, you have to exercise the heart and so forth. So I do think then at a certain point in gathering knowledge of the theory and so forth that uh, it, that's a big undertaking in itself. But it does culminate in kind of drifting towards um, wanting to hear about the leelas of Krishna. So it should culminate in that more and more. And the exercise, spiritual exercise of the intellect. Krishna says in the Gita that those who study this conversation upside down, inside out, from back uh, the front and front to back, worship me with their intelligence. So it's, it's you're worshiping Rag Bhakti, if you will, with your intelligence by studying, for example, the teachings of, of Jiva Goswami. Hmm? So, uh, and in due course, then. Um, one thing, of course, is that in the beginning, it may be this, there may be this hunger to like arrest it in the intellect, to capture it. At a certain point, you realize, well, I, you know, it's a little beyond <laughs> that. Even if I have a great command, in the eyes of others, I know for myself, I have very little command of it all. And I'm always learning even something new about it, such as the nature of the theory and so forth. So um, one kind of exhausts that at, at a certain point, but is in a good position of uh, theoretical understanding to apply oneself. And then, you know, it, it, then as, as the attraction will come to be something much easier, <laughs> which is to hear the hear the leelas and uh, hear the charming nature of Krishna, Radha, and so forth. So um, so I wouldn't look at it just quite like that, like uh, we don't have attachment to certain qualities. Should I be attached to qu- these qualities, the qualities of Titikshava, Karunika, Sufrida, Sarvada, the qualities of a sadhu, and so forth. Well, of course, we want to develop saintly qualities, um, and, and that will come in the context of bhakti, but I wouldn't quite look at it um, like that. I would look at it as, uh, again, 
developing theoretical, culturing theoretical knowledge about the ideal, honestly assessing one's uh, affinity and uh, level of attraction and applying oneself fully there. That is how we'll develop the eye. Again, I've said before, the bhava, which is this, you know, the spiritual persona, that when churned becomes rasa, arises out of the ground of tattva. So getting the ground in place is a good idea. We meet people who have apparently affinity for rag bhakti, and we realize they don't understand the tattva when we hear them sometimes. So mm, that could be seen as um, what Padma Purana describes as a disturbance to the community of, of devotees. Hmm? Uh, what is the verse? Shruti Smriti Paranadi Pantra Triki Bidimbina Aikantiki Harayar Bhakti Lukpatyai Bhakalpate. And it means one who doesn't, uh, who doesn't perform bhakti according to the scriptures, and it means according to the scriptures of the path that you're on. If you're on the bhakti path, there are certain scriptures that your bhakti should conform with. It doesn't, not necessarily, you know, we have our own smriti, hari bhakti vilas, we're not concerned within the context of bhakti with uh, manusmriti, for example, hmm. other than to understand some of Krishna's conversations with the gopis, where he might cite it and so forth, where it's applicable in the, in the context of the leela. That's another thing. Hmm. Uh, so, um, um, again, in the, in the Purana says that he's got bhakti, but it's not arising out of a uh, uh, scriptural ground, if you will. Hmm? It's a disturbance to the society. So it could be applied, perhaps. In uh, this context, we, 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 we see uh, there were many people in Bengal, different sects, uh, sometime after the disappearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, identified by Bhakti Vinod Thakur, who are espousing uh, Rag Bhakti, um, Gopi Bhav, uh, 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 as an ideal and so forth, and and um, apparently preoccupied with it and so forth. But the ground, if you will, was one of Appa Siddhanta against the, the, the not in accordance with the conclusion. So it was it was dismissed by the by the Thakur. Hmm? And appropriately so. So, I think you want to, you know, it's good. And different people have different different tendencies and propensities. But for those that do that, get have that propensity to give the to study the Siddhanta, who can then teach others is to get that ground uh, very uh, firm up the ground, so to speak. That shouldn't be seen as separate from. Um, from Rag Bhakti. Hmm. Again, what's really beautiful is to apply oneself according to one's um, eligibility. One can, I mean, it doesn't mean you don't understand theoretically that our ideal is Raj Bhakti. These are the opportunities uh, uh, study and, you know, we find in Jaiva Dharma. Uh, uh, Gurudev asked Prajnath and Vijay Kumar, "What is their attraction?" They said, I mean, "They've been studying the Bhagavatam, and this is what they came up with." So they were studying the Tattva, and in due course, um, they developed attraction. Hmm. So um, a taste for that, hmm. for the theory. This is what Rupa, Rupa Goswami giving Rupa Goswami giving the theory of of Uttam Bhakti and if you look at it carefully they're advocating the rag ideal Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam that's a rag perspective it's not a Vaikuntha perspective they do talk about Vaidhi Bhakti hmm, that's also Uttam Bhakti of the Vaidhi Bhakti type and so forth but it's not necessarily a Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam perspective in Vaikuntha they don't think that uh, Narayan is, uh, is an avatar of, of Krishna. Hmm? So if this is the foundational like a stone 
the Paribha Sutra, the, the password to understanding the Bhagavatam, in terms of tattva, from Jiva Goswami's point of view, this phrase, this 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 line, Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam, then he says we're understanding bhakti from Ragmarg perspective, right? That's what we're teaching. That's what the Sandarbha is about. He's got a whole Sandarbha, Krishna's Sandarbha, about this one line, Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam. So, he, he, yes, he does mention there's this kind of bhakti, there's a Vaikuntha bhakti, it's there. I mean, but but it's not just pick and choose, it's like what is he actually teaching about? What is he actually advocating? What is he, what is he representative of? And then we, this is a key point. Again, if this is the the, the password to unlocking the the uh, the, 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 the siddhanta, the, 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 the tattva of the Bhagavatam, then the tattva of the Bhagavatam is a that Narayan is an avatar of Krishna, and Krishna is Swayam Bhagavan. He's Rasaraj hmm? in Braj. That's where he's Rasaraj. Hmm? He doesn't have, yeah, yeah, that's where he's Rasaraj <laughs> in Braj. Hmm? He's not having Parakya and Dwarka. Hmm? No. That's it, and that's a, that's a kind of Rasa, right? He's having it in Braj. He hasn't got Priyanarmasakas in Dwarka. Well, maybe Madhu Mangal accompanies him some, to some extent, but, uh, but <laughs> uh, he's there in Bhagda Madhava, but, uh, but uh, typically, you know, his uh, friends like Narada, we were talking the other day, are, are, are different. So, um, so that's, I think, how you should look at that. Hmm? That uh, my rag bhakti is to study that the, the teachings about rag bhakti. What are they, as given by the Goswamis? If, if that's your penchant, and that is your penchant, and that's good, and everything will come from that, hmm? for sure. Hmm? Hmm. And if we jump over that, not everybody may be, as, you know, they, they want, have that aptitude to study the scripture, but they'll want to hear from somebody that has. And, and learn and so forth, and so that their sentiments will also be well, well grounded. Hmm. If someone says, "I, I, I, I like you know, Madhurya Rasa," Srila Guru asks, well, "What does that mean? What does that mean? You like Madhurya Rasa? What does it mean? Well, I'm attracted to Madhurya Rasa. What do you mean by that? What? Let me see what your understanding of all that is." You can't give a good explanation. It's a nice sentiment, but you should learn more what it is. Then they might tell me if you like it. You got to learn about it. How you know if you like it? It's not just uh, some. Not just a sentiment. Do you like what we teach about it? So I like the romantic love, Rasa, with Krishna. So what does that mean? I mean, does it? It, it should mean I want to be a handmaiden of Radha, and, and I want to be, be even be her friend. Hmm? I want to be a Dasi, not even a friend like Lalita Vishaka. And they, you don't know all these things. And what 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 does it mean that you like Madhuri Rasa? Hmm? Those things are there. You, you study Bhakti Rasa Marita Sindhu, hmm? and that would be a good book, you know, to go over to go through the Sandarbhas, to go through Bhakti Rasa Marita Sindhu in great. Uh, detail hmm? and uh, then you get a real foundation in that and then he, then we read the Gopal Champo and, <laughs> and, then, and as he says at the end of Gopal Champo so I've showcased the various sentiments here by now after reading this something should have jumped out at you hmm? if not go back and read it again hmm? something like that does that help? yeah what else? Yes. Um, is there any benefit to uh, visiting the holy places? Like I'm reading Navadvip Dham Mahatya, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and all the places in Navadvip that correspond with the places in Vrindavan. And um, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is saying how everyone should go in this Purvakana. But... Um, 
you know, I've read and I've heard you say that the real benefit of going to the holy places is to hear from the sadhu there. So if you, look, you have an opportunity to go to, let's say, Navadvi, but your guru is not going to be there, is there any benefit just to going to those places and trying to remember? Well, I mean, the benefit of going there is stated in the scriptures to be taking advantage of sadhu sangha. Hmm. Um, because how they are the real residents of the Dom and they can acquaint you with it more than, um, you know, a plane ticket or whatever, uh, you know, just walking on, on the surface of it. That doesn't mean to say that you can't, um, that there's no sadhusanga, if you will, through reading a book like Jaiva Dharma and getting a perspective and, and he's telling you about the different places, and you can go there and with a reverential mood. And so, of course, in the context of that, you would seek the association of sadhus as well, where there's kirtan and and uh, kata and uh, uh, discussions of the Bhagavad and Chaitanya Charitamrita. So, I think that the, the statement in the in Bhagavatam that says you're just like a, an animal if you go to the holy place just to take a bath but don't take advantage of saintly persons. It, it really speaks to a Kanishta Adhikari in the, in the way in which Bhakti Vinod Thakur talked about the Kanishta Adhikari, someone who's like nominally a Vaishnav, something like that. It doesn't really have any tattva, any sambandha hmm, and goes there and and uh, who knows what, you know, comes up with, um, here's some story and gets taken in by somebody who, who tells them Krishna's appearing every night mm-hmm. on the Jamuna, uh, like the Mahaprabhu was told when he went to Vrindama Kaliya, Krishna's appearing every night on the Jamuna. Mahaprabhu said, well, this is like Kali Yuga, how can Krishna be appearing? And I'm Krishna. <laughs> so he went there and he, and he showed them it was just some fishermen with his lights, you know, and so forth. So, uh, these kind of sentimental, you know, uninformed uh, perspectives and so forth. Um, the common people, let's say, in India, to t- spend your whole life savings to walk from wherever, you know, without other means of conveyance to a holy place, if you've gone there all that way, but you don't get some bandhagyan by good association, then it's like the idea of the yeah, property is to give the example, the fly is on my lap, he's close by physical proximity, but he's not close by consciousness. Somebody once tried to touch Sridhar Maharaj's feet after the kirtan, he was making a commotion. He said, what is he trying to do? And then he realized, he said, oh, you think that's what it means to touch the foot of the Vaishnava? Huh, that's not so easy like that. Not a physical thing, necessarily. It could be, hmm? but if that's all you think it is, then, uh, then it's not. It gets to connect, right, on the level of understanding, of consciousness, of heart, and so forth. So, so, you know, again, let's use Bhakti Vinod Thakur's definition, uh, classical um, uh, uh, Kanishta Adhikari doesn't apply, in one sense, to new devotees who are converts, who come to Gaudiya Vaishnavism through some Bandhagyan, who hear a reasoning about it and change, and, become, and they're, they're, they're born... As such, they don't have any sambandha gyan. They're Vaishnavas, and my religion is a Vaishnav, and they don't know the difference between it, really, and worship of Kali, and uh, they don't know that the name of Krishna, to think that the name of Krishna and Kali are one and the same is an offense to the name of Krishna. So they're not making any progress. Hmm? They're like nominally Vaishnavas. That's the way, that's what he was encountering. He referred to them as Kanishtadikaris. The difference between them and the Madhu Madhikaris was they had some Bandhagyan. Hmm? So from that perspective, you could say everybody who comes through some Bandhagyan, if you will, through being preached to and converted and given the logic of the scriptures is Madhu Madhikari. Of course, then there's another way to look at it as well, mm-hmm. obviously. Hmm? You could say the Kanishta Kanishta, and then there's the Madhyam Kanishta. Hmm? And then there's the Uttam Kanishta, and then there's the Kanishta Madhyam, and Madhyam, Madhyam, Uttam, Madhyam, and so forth. That might be uh, uh, another way to uh, uh, explain and 
clarifying further, subdivide. Um, but that verse in the Bhagavatam that uh, says you're no better than an animal if you go to the holy place and don't take advantage is really referring to people like Bhakti Vinod was referring. They were literally living in the Dham for that matter, not taking advantage of saintly persons, learning the... Uh, that, that's why Bhakti Vinod was emphasizing on writing and, and, and um, printing books and trying to bring it a popular, you know, to the to the general public an understanding of the Goswami's teachings through a, a novel approach like his book uh, Jaiva Dharma and so forth where he puts the Sandarbhas and Ujjval Nilamani in there and, so to speak through the conversation um, conversations of the book um, he wants to acquaint them with teachings that you know they're not going to go read Sanskrit and they're and they're going to, they could read a story like this, and then and so that's the idea. That's what you're going to get. Plus, you're going to get bhakti sankar from good good association from powerful devotees. But um, you know, I wouldn't say there's no benefit from going to the dom, even for people who go there and don't take advantage of association. There may be some, but. Um, but the Bhagavatam does make a strong statement about it for the purpose of emphasizing the importance of Sadhu Sangha, which distinguishes, the, the, in another sense, the the Kanishta uh, Bhagavat from the Madhyam Bhagavat. Because in Bhagavatam, in the 11th canto, it's explained that the Kanishta Bhagavat has some appreciation for Krishna. He likes, let's go to Krishna, let's go to Vrindavan and see Bhanki Bihari. Hmm. And, um, and but they but if some if the, nowadays there's probably traffic jam to get there, and if some sadhu gets in the way, then they might run him over. You know, get out of the way, buddy. Hmm. The, the, the distinguishing characteristic is they like Krishna, but they don't have appreciation for the Vaishnav. That's the characteristic of the Kanishta Bhagwat, right? Hmm. So they go to the Dham, but they don't care for associating with devotees, and this is not their objective, and so forth. So they remain as a Kanishta Kanishta. Hmm. Hmm. And um, there's some benefit, but the emphasis in the statement of the Bhagavatam. Um, Sa Eva Gokara. Hmm. He's like the cow or an ass, he says, and the Bhagavatam says, if they go to the holy place and take bath and so forth, but don't take advantage of association. There may be cows and mules in the Dham. So, that's a good position in one sense, right? So you can go there and be like an ass or a cow in the Dham, but but uh, that's not our ideal, uh, uh, right? Hmm? Um, so, so to get association with sadhus, there's a verse emphasizing sadhu sangha more than it is um, dismissing any benefit from going to the dom. Hmm? There can be some benefit, but now you know people like yourself, you know, you're an initiated devotee, and so 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 you, you hear about the dom. There's benefit from going there. Of course, you would go there and you would try to find saintly association and so forth. Um, now that being said, if I had the choice of going to the Dham or associating with Prabhupada, then there would be no choice, right? During the Braj Mandal Parakram one, one year of um, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasthi Thakur's mission, uh, where they would camp out and then there would be Kirtan lecture and discussion of different places, spend the night and then move on the next day and go around the whole Braj Mandal. Um, when they reached a certain spot, then they stayed for, I don't know, a couple of days or something there, and it was the last night that they were going to be there, and there was the famous Seishai Vishnu deity who you could have gone and get the darshan of that night. If you hadn't, it was the last night to do so, so it was announced this is the last night that you can get the darshan of the Seishai Vishnu deity here, and we're going to move on. And Guru Maharaj is also going to be speaking tonight. Mm-hmm. So some devotees went for the darshan, 
and some devotees stayed for the mm, for the uh, the class. Amongst them was Prabhupada and Sridhar Marsh, who stayed for the class. And Saraswati Thakur then later referred to those disciples who went to the for the darshan as Dundavat disciples. They pay the Dundavat. They go through the form, but they don't understand the essence. They're Kanishta. They, they, they chose that over over Sadhusanga. When, when they're the very eye to see, say, Shai Vishnu or whomever comes through Sadhusanga, I've often said, the reason we bow down before the deities is because some Vaishnava told us, we should bow down here. This is God. This is Krishna. <laughs> so where is Krishna? He's in the heart of the Vaishnava. So to develop that tendency for Sada Sangha is very important. It's a very unfortunate thing that after the disappearance of Prabhupada that he was misrepresented by some people and it and um and it caused this withdrawal hmm, in the name of affinity for and taking shelter of Prabhupada that really in many respects resulted in in the very opposite uh, tendency in some scar or impression that you would want, and it would result in the impression to avoid association in the name of keeping with Prabhupada, who would who had passed on. And uh, what you re- what you really want when Prabhupada passed on uh, from the world, we were most of us had a some scar for hearing from Vaishnavas. So he had us well well trained. So then he, those who attempted to um, follow his lead and succeed him, we gave them the benefit of the doubt and you know, we naturally tried to assist them and so forth when they um, proved themselves to um, not be up to the task and in, in, in no more con- definitive um, sense than by rejecting and vilifying Pujapadrita Marsh, well, then... Um, you could see that they were not uh, um, living up to the expectations of that um, the one in that uh, serving in that capacity. So, um, so the tendency to want to have sadhusanga. This is very. You want that kind of um, samskar. You even want the opposite of that. Hmm. And it's uh, it's very ironic to have it in the name of you know exclusive devotion to Prabhupada. With, with, if it, when it translates out, not I hate this guy, I don't want that guy. This guy's bad. That she's a, uh, I don't want anybody. To, you know, then it's uh, if, we're, if we're if we're lucky, we get good association, we can overcome that. Hmm? I mean, it's understandable how many of his disciples moved in that direction, but. You can understand how it's 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 not the position we were in as he left us, so to speak. Shridhar Marsh was a, was a good corrective to that, being a, a very powerful um, sadhu and uh, good good association and and so forth. So you want that tendency to come within you <clears throat> to take advantage of sadhu sangha and 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 really. Uh, uh, you know, you try to get a little bit wherever, you know. If a guy's only got a drop of honey, you take a drop <laughs> and leave the rest and go go for there. You know, you, that should we should try to develop a tendency like that. Hmm. Somebody's talking about Krishna. Well, I should go there. Hmm. He's saying something wrong. I can raise my hand <laughs> and make a point. And uh, you know, I'd say something right. Hmm. He's a big subject, so. He has some affinity for Krishna, and maybe he'll say something about him that I didn't think about. Uh, so that kind of tendency, that's that's that kind of environment we really want. It's just that we don't have that kind of environment in the international community of Gaudiya Vaishnavism, unfortunately. And it's so much due to not understanding of tattva, <laughs> Guru Tattva, for example. Confusion about that. Hmm. So does that help? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What else? What's the time? Seven twenty. Okay. What else? Yes. Um, I heard you say that before the stage of nishta, 
um, a sadhaka can engage very powerfully um, or just fill his day with bhakti, um, fill his life with bhakti so that all his anartas are kind of drowned. Um, and I was wondering if one can sustain that long term if they're not close to nishta. Well, really, uh, the stage of nishta is such that, and I think that's how I've used this uh, analogy that you've somewhat cited, that if you have seeds and you pour water on them and keep pouring water on them, they'll never sprout, right? They'll get waterlogged. So in nishta, there are seeds still of desire, but the bhakti is so consistent and uh, uh, that that it's like pouring the water of bhakti on the material seeds, and so they can't fructify. They become waterlogged once bhakti turns into ruchi. Mm -hmm. So before nishta, then, is the stage of anishta, but bhajana kriya, right? So bhajana kriya um, is uh, there may be, desires may get in the way, mind may be, dist be distracted, will be distracted, and so forth. But the stage of Bhajana Kriya is like the fire of ordeal. So one perseveres. Hmm. The power, the fountain of one's bhakti is, 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 is not strong enough. One has to, one is watering and weeding at the same time. Hmm. Initially, there's no need for weeding. Water's killing the weeds, too. Hmm? Given so much water, even the weeds can't sprout, right? But if one's bhakti is not really strong, the stream is not really strong, and seeds may, the seed may start to come up, weeds may come, so you have to be vigilant and pull out the weeds in that stage um, as well. So it's it's like the fire for a deal, and um, hmm, there may be some ups and downs, but one perseveres and fills one's day with... With bhakti, if you're wondering if that's sustainable, that's how you get to nishta. <laughs> yeah, that's sustainable. Maybe there may be bumps in, in the road, but one keeps going. Does that help? Yeah. What else? How's the project going over there? It's it's going well. He mowed the grass today, or some of it. So it's long. So that was good. We would like you to come over next week. When are the horses coming? June first. Oh, June first. Okay. Unfortunately, I'm sure they really like his beans. <laughs> Next week, okay, good, good. All right, we'll stop there then. Shishi Gauradamadavakija, Gaurabhaktavrindakija. <laughs>